Today we have more Corsa 2020 previews to talk about. Planeswalker goodness, crazy mythics, lots going on. If you've missed previous preview episodes and want to get caught up, you can click the first link in the description for the entire playlist. I do hope you're enjoying our preview season coverage, and if you are, consider hitting that like button down below. Helps out a lot. Cavalier of Dawn is two of anything in three white for a 4-6 elemental knight with vigilance. When the cavalier enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a colorless 3-3 golem artifact creature token. When the cavalier dies, return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. I love that this is a knight because ignoring the first trigger, the second one can get back history of Benalia, which means that knight tribal is back on the menu, fam. It's a sweet bit of interaction there. I do like this card and being able to generous gift any non-land on the table is nice, but I do think it it lacks a bit of flair that the Red Cavalier has. Just seemed like so much more was going on there. Anyways, this knight is just big enough as a 4-6 to dodge most damage base removal and combat death, in addition to being a solid attacker thanks to Vigilance. Enters the battlefield, replaces the best card with a 3-3, then when it dies, recurs something important. That's what will make this card truly great, the quality of whatever it can bring back. Eldest Reborn, History of Benalia, Immortal Sun, give it some thought, because without recurrable cards, this isn't so great. Captivating Gyre is four of anything in two blue for a sorcery. Return up to three target creatures to their owner's hands. I adore mass on summons, especially in limited. This card is expensive and sorcery speed, which pretty much pushes it out of competitive standard play. But that isn't where this is supposed to go anyways. Captivating Gyre is meant for limited. This card exists to teach players how awesome blue control can be in the late game. A tempo gain like this can mean the difference between victory and defeat. It immediately breaks all board stalls without a second thought. It's perfect for what it is. Don't underestimate on summon effects in limited ever oftentimes they are worth the premium. Captivating Gyre is no different, solid one of, and any blue limited deck guaranteed. Mew Yan Ling, Sky Dancer is one of anything and two blue for a two loyalty legendary planeswalker you can plus two and until your next turn. Up to one target creature gets minus two minus oh and loses flying. You can also minus three and create a four four blue elemental bird creature token with flying. Lastly, you can minus eight and you get an emblem with. Islands you control have the ability to tap to draw a card. The first thing I notice about Mew is that you can't use her first minus ability right away. That's really interesting design. She hits the battlefield on two but immediately goes to four out of light strike range in order to protect herself from an attacker, I know I'll be using this to ground Thief of Sandy and Hydroid Crisis a lot. Now even though you can't use it immediately, her minus three is her best ability. Getting a 4-4 elemental bird with flying is a huge blocker, attacker has creature type synergy in the set as an elemental, and has flying synergy in the set as a flyer. Here's my only issue. I think she's a good planeswalker, balanced and powerful, but she's going to fight for the same spots as Teferi Time Raveler and Narset Parter of Veils, and we all know how that's gonna go. Mew has a better shot at being a walker in the new flying spirit deck that might take off, or if elementals go teamer, possibly a damage reducer there. She has unique design and certainly a lot of potential. We'll have to see where she goes. I'm really torn. Knight of the Ebon Legion is one black mana for a 1-2 vampire knight. You can pay 3 mana and the knight gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains death touch until end of turn. At the beginning of your end step, if a player lost 4 more life this turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the knight. Holy butts, Batman! This is one of the better black 1-drops we've seen in a while. 1 mana for this is crazy cheap. Let's go from the top down. It's a vampire knight, both relevant creature types, especially in standard right now. The activated ability makes it a 4 or 5 and gives it death touch, which will disincentivize attackers from coming at you. Even if they do, 5 toughness is a lot. So this will survive most combat encounters. Then, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, it gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. It doesn't say opponent. So you can use this with a Danto Vanguard, pay 4 life, boom, condition met. I'm really enjoying the idea of white black knights in standard. After Cavalier of Dawn and now this, I think we might have a tribal deck people aren't expecting to get better. Knight of the Ebon Legion is a great one drop, wowza. Legion's End is 2 mana for a sorcery, exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost 2 or less, and all other creatures that player controls with the same name as that creature. Then that player reveals their hand and exiles all cards with that name from their hand in graveyard. So I've thought a lot about this card and it seems to be targeting something specific. For me, my favorite target for this card will be Growth Chamber Guardian because opponents always end up with a million of those, and something like Gutter Bones, easily brought back, annoying to deal with in aristocrat strategies, and you exile from basically everywhere so you never have to worry about him again. It's possible that this card was made for Rat Colony or Persistent Petitioners, but I don't see them making a rare card like this with those two cards in mind. This feels like an anti-Guardian or Gutter Bones type measure. A standard sideboard is probably where this belongs, if anywhere. Rotting Regisar is 3 mana for a 7-6 zombie dinosaur. At the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. Wait a second. Zombie dinosaur. That's awesome. 3 mana and a 7. A 7-6. 
for three mana. Riding Registrar is so friggin' good. This card's amazing. You want to tell me that a black deck being forced to discard cards is a drawback? Come on, that's nonsense. As far as I'm concerned, this card is three mana for a 7-6 with upside. Talk about passing the vanilla test. I knew we were getting a little over the top, but a 7-6 for three mana with really no downside? I mean, my goodness, we talk about two twos for two all the time. I just can't believe that this card actually exists. I don't know what else to say. Three mana, giant creature, great creature types, no downside. This game is turning into nonsense. Soren, Imperious Bloodlord is three mana for a four loyalty legendary planeswalker. You can plus one and target creature you control gains death, touch, and lifelink until end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a plus one plus one counter on it. You can also plus one and you may sacrifice a vampire. When you do, Soren deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. You can also minus three and you may put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Mono Black Soren is back. We haven't seen this in a long time, but I absolutely adore this design. Talk about a tribal leader. Soren's coming with a lot of vampire pride this time around. Two different ways to gain loyalty loyalty right off the bat. The first ability has a ton of potential. My first thought was Adanto Vanguard into Soren. He plus ones the Vanguard, gives it lifelink and a plus one plus one counter on it. It inevitably pays life to stay alive, but that doesn't matter thanks to lifelink. Brutal combo right there. A Johnny's Pride Mate is another good target for it. Resplendent Angel. Look at a black white deck for Soren to make his mark. Now I want to focus on his ultimate that you can cast right away. Put a vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Play Soren on turn 3, activate his minus 3 immediately, then you can have the Haunt of Hightower out on turn 3, or Kazarov, Senger Pureblood, Queen's Agent, Bishop of Rebirth, Vona, Butcher of Magan, Vampire Sovereign. Plenty of high-powered vampires at your disposal on turn 3 in standard. Could make for a dangerous addition to the format, but that isn't even where Soren will shed the most blood. Commander! New Soren is meant for Commander. Edgar Markov is calling him back home. Soren Soren can sacrifice vampire tokens to lightning helix, but more importantly, for three men, he can cheat Baron Sengar onto the battlefield, or Lycia Sanguine Tribune, or Kalitas Blood Chief of Get and Necropolis Regent Narcana Revenant. Soren Imperious Bloodlord is the Lord of Vampires, and his cheap cost and absurd vampire abilities will earn him a place in vampire decks from now until eternity. Marauding Raptors, two mana for a 2-3 dinosaur creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, the Raptor deals two damage to it. If a dinosaur is dealt damage this way, the Raptor gets plus two plus so until end of turn. Marauding Raptor is a great addition to the tier two dinosaur decks in the format right now. Being able to trigger and rage more consistently gives the deck a new shot at life as well as sweet blanket cost reduction. Dinosaurs don't have much longer in standard to shine, so if they're gonna make waves, now would be when. Marauding Raptor might just be the the last needed puzzle piece. Repeated reverberation is two of anything in two red for an instant. When you next cast an instant spell, cast a sorcery spell, or activate a loyalty ability this turn, copy that spell or ability twice. You may choose new targets for the copies twice, and you can copy loyalty abilities? The name of this card is right. Repeated Reverberation. What a strong card. Four mana, instant speed. This is seriously pushed. Everyone's talking about this card with Raw Storm Conduit and his absurd minus two ability. You minus two Raw, copy repeated Reverberation, target, I don't know, any burn spell. It gets copied four times, and Raw triggers each of those times. You can kill someone straight away with a combo like that. We've had Phoenix and Standard for a while now as the Premier is a deck, but with Raw out and this new Reverberation and expansion explosion, there are enough combos to create a real spell slinging is it deck and standard. I love this so much. Guess I got to add that to the list too. Hottest of dangs. Unchained Berserker is two mana for a 1-1 human Berserker with protection from white. The Berserker gets plus two plus oh as long as it's attacking. What a fascinating card. Another pro color spell in the set, Unchained Berserker, seems to be using some kind of Hieromancy. Reminds me of Gideon. Anyways, against mono white decks and standards, this is kind of a beating, blocking basically anything in that deck for days. And because none of those creatures have trample, it's going to save a ton of life over the course of a game. And when it does attack, it gets a nice power boost and is essentially unblockable against those mono white strategies. The decision will be if this is worth including in the mono red sideboards when cards like Goblin Chain Whirler already do so much damage to those decks. I enjoy this card quite a bit. It's a nice filler for limited, certainly has a chance at standard as far as I'm concerned. What a nice sideboard card. Season of Growth is two mana for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you control, draw a card. I like the idea of running Naya Feather with an enchantment like this. The scry is a great add-on, but that second trigger is absolutely bonkers in the right deck. By running that in a deck with Feather, you would legit never run out of cards to cast. If you untap with the Sand Feather on the battlefield, that's probably game over. Now for modern play, I've heard some chatter about this in Bogles, but I'm just not sure how that's possible. The deck list is already really tight and you'd probably have to ditch an aura for this and I don't think Bogos wants to do that right now. Regardless, this does a heck of a lot as a two mana uncommon, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it in standard.
Yarrick the Desecrated is two of anything, one black, one green, and one blue for a 3-5 legendary creature elemental horror with death touch and lifelink. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Oh, wow. This is not something I expected out of this set. Read that card again. It says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Not just creatures and artifacts like Panharmonicon. Any permanent can trigger any permanent. That means enchantment and lands. It means everything. Running Eric as a commander means that you can run the power creatures and artifacts you want to blink like acidic slime, your battle sphere and duplicate. But you can also play cards like Guardian Project, Elemental Bond, and Path of Discovery just to name a few. I don't see why Yara can't be a new Soul Tire reanimation commander. Fill a deck with loads of graveyard based spells, load up the yard with solid end of the battlefield triggers, bring everything back, get tons of triggers, do it all again. As far as Soul Tire commanders go, you'll find none better for a Panharmonicon style deck than Yarrick. So if you love the color combination and want to copy triggers for days, this is your new best friend. Another day, of course, at 2020 previews down and we're starting to see the set take shape. Since it is a core set, it's pretty obvious that Wizards is printing the best examples of each color they can. I gotta say, they're kind of nailing it. I love the new One Man and Knight, love Cavalier of Dawn, Moo, there's so much going on here. I need to know what you're thinking about all this, so please leave your thoughts down below and we'll talk about it. What are you still looking for, still hoping for? What do you think will be in this set that hasn't been revealed yet? Hit me up. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for the latest and most reliable core set 2020 preview information you could ever need. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Booster boxes, of course, at 2020 are up for pre-order right now on TCG Player for $98 each. If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way too much, I got you back right here. Click the link on the screen, helps the channel out a heck of a lot, and you get boxes delivered right here door on release. It's a huge win-win for everyone. Enjoy!